Hello friends, how are you all? My name is Arshi Devedi and I welcome you back to my video. So this is the video about Bijolia movement of Rajasthan. This question is regularly asked in many exams that with which state this Bijolia movement is associated. So it is associated with Rajasthan friends. This is especially important from the perspective of Rajasthan pieces. But yes, this question gets asked in many different exams also. Okay, basically I would like to tell you that this is the English version of the video friends. If you are interested in the Hindi version of the video, so the link of this is given in the description box below. You can go and watch the Hindi version of the video also. This is presented by me, Harsha Devedi. So the first phase of this Bijola movement was from 1897 to 1915. Second phase from 1915 to 1923. And the third phase from 1923 to 1941. So it was spread in three phases friends. We will have a look at it. Bijoli was basically a Jagir of the former Mewad state. This former Mewad state is in the present day Rajasthan in India. And this movement was against excessive land revenue exactions and implementation. You know, the land revenue was really high. So it was against excessive land revenue that this, you know, uh, this uh, Bijolia movement was started. Okay. So there was, uh, you know, this uh, whole, there was a Bijolia Jagir and there were many nearby Jagirs also. So this is started in the town of Bijolia and slowly, slowly it got spread to the neighboring Jagirs also. Okay. At that time, the population of Bijolia town was around 1200 in 1891. And the leadership to this Bijolia movement was given by different people at different types of time. Initially, it was by Sadhu Sitaram Das. Then in the second phase, Vijay Singh Pathik and Manik, Manika Lal Verma were the leader. In the third phase, some more leaders came. But actually, they were not very much you know, uh, famous and known among the peasants. So their leadership was not very effective. So all the stages we are going to see friends. And this movement actually continued in 1941. And a big struggle was there in it. This struggle lasted for around 50 years. It also gained national attention. It resisted state operation, did a lot of things, brought consciousness among the peasants against the feudal and oppressive elements of our society and administration. So all these things came forward. Moving forward. Bijolia movement has to be understood in three phases, friends, because it is being covered in three different time phases. The first phase is 1897 to 1915. The second phase will be from 1915 to 1923. And third phase from 1923 to 1941. Now, what happened, friends, that, uh, you know, today also death feasts were there. How it started? Now, I'm going to explain how this Bijolia movement started. So, till uh, today also you have seen that uh, when somebody dies in a family, Okay, so after the theory function, you know, some sort of feast is given to people so that people come and eat. It is for the, you know, Atma ki Shanti ke liye. So, at that time also death feast used to take place. They were known by the name of Nukta. So, at a Nukta of one such person, thousands of Dakar peasants of many villages of this big old Bijolia, Jagir, they met with one another. And after meeting, they discussed their problems with each other at the feast. So, when they were discussing their problems, one thing came in common that all of them were suffering from the same problem. And the problem was excessive land revenue. You know, they had to pay a very high amount of land revenue and they were compelled to do forced labor. The Jote Dars, the Jagi Dars, the landowners, the British government, all were compelling to do forced labor at very minimal cost or absolutely no cost. So such things were going on and all of them were very much affected by it and they were affected by the same reasons. So what happened, what these, these peasants meeting, what they did, that they appointed two persons. They appointed Nanji Patel of Berisal and Thakri Patel of Gopal Nivas. They appointed them, they, you know, uh, did, uh, designated them as their official negotiator who will go to the Maharana of Udaipur and they will tell to the Maharana of Udaipur about the problems of the peasants of Bijolia Jagir and in uh, expectation that Maharana will give some relief to them. So these two representatives went to Udaipur and they struggled for eight months to meet Maharana. And after a struggle of eight months, they were finally able to meet the Maharana of Udaipur. When Maharana of Udaipur listened to their problems, okay, so he appointed a revenue officer and said the revenue officer to conduct a proper inquiry, the assess the grand level situation and then report it to him. So that revenue officer went, he conducted a proper inquiry. Okay. And on the basis of that inquiry report, he told that the concerns of the peasants, the problems of the peasants are correct and genuine. Okay. Now, when this report uh, went to Maharana of Udaipur, he didn't took a proper action. No proper action was taken by the provincial or state administration friends. No heed was given to the report. 
okay the jagirdar was given a mild warning and these two papers who were appointed as the official negotiator of this nanji patel of berisal and thakri patel of gopal nivas some actions were taken against them they were being removed from their constituency so things like this happened none no proper action was given and the jagirdar was given a mild warning obviously this was very much normal friends because if you are going to listen to the problem of the peasants you will have to reduce the land revenue and if you are going to reduce the land revenue your income will stop and why will a king stop his own income that was the basis of all the problems friend so the jagirdar was just given a warning okay then in 1899 1900 a famine struck the region people have nothing to eat and despite of that in 1903 the jagirdar imposed the chanwari tax and what happened in this chanwari tax that every peasant who was marrying her daughter has to pay 13 rupees to the jagirdar as a tax now this was not liked by the people people at didn't like this provision at all and when nothing was not able to they protested against this chanwari tax but when the jagirdar didn't yielded okay what the people do they started relocating to bundi and gwalior areas now when the jagirdar saw that the people are moving away from his area he was a bit nervous and he abolished this chanwari tax and also gave some relief and some concessions so that people may come back okay so things like this was it the chanwari tax was first implemented and then withdrawn this thing happened friends then the incumbent rao kishan singh died the he was rao kishan singh this rao kishan singh was the incumbent jagirdar he unfortunately died in 1906 and after that who was became the jagirdar prithvi singh became the jagirdar now prithvi singh was a little bit extremist in his approach okay prithvi singh reimposed the chanwari tax and in addition to the chanwari tax he brought in a new tax named as succession tax which was also known as talwar bandhai lag so this prithvi singh in addition to the chanwari tax also bought this talwar bandhai lag now this led to a major revolution you can see friends that during the reign of rao kishan singh the people were able to withdraw the chanwari tax and now this person prithvi singh is bringing in addition to chanwari tax this talwar bandhai lag so obviously people are not going to like it so um, agitation started in march 1913 under the leadership of sadhu sitaram das now lot of petitions were sent but when the jagirdar was not yielding what happened that as a mark of protest these peasants in 1913 14 they left the land fallow means they didn't cultivated the land so when they didn't cultivated the land no crop was there no harvest was there nothing was sold in the market the jagirdar didn't got the revenue neither the state stack checker dot the radio so obviously their revenue suffered okay now prithvi singh died in december 1913 okay and then a minor heir was sat on the throne of the jagirdar but actually he was a minor so Jag- this uh, bijolia Uh, jagir directly came under the control of the udaipur state and some amount of minor concessions were given to the peasants in 1914 because these concessions were given because the peasants have stopped cultivating their land so if they are going to stop cultivating their land how will the taxes come so some amount of concessions were given in 1914 but these concessions were never implemented okay so this was a phase first phase of the bijolia movement now we are going to talk about the second phase of the bijolia movement friends the second phase of the bijolia movement was led by vijay pathik singh his name was also bhup singh he was called upon to took the lead, take the leadership of the movement he took the leadership of the movement and he took many progressive steps like he opened school library akhada established bijolia kisan panchayat which was basically a democratic type of institution and he was assisted by this person manik lal verma now manik lal verma initially used to work for the maharana of udaipur but when this person manik lal verma saw that something wrong was happening with the peasants and he saw that vijay singh pathik is organizing a very proper revolt against the administration for reducing this taxes this manik lal verma went uh, you know stopped working for maharana and he went by the side of vijay singh pathik and started working for the people of bijolia jagir thousands of petitions were sent in 1917 to abolish the war tax high land revenue forced labor etc etc you know non cooperation was going on at that amount of time 1800 august 1918 parallel to this non cooperation movement in bijolia jagir no rent campaign was going on okay so these things were happening friends now when maharana of udaipur got to know all these things he was not at all in favor of listening to the people he was full of ego he said that why should i listen to the people i am the sovereign rural they will obey my command okay so he was very much egoistic he was not at all in favor of listening to the people so he decided to 
सप्रेस एंड क्रश द मूवमेंट विच लेट टू द अरेस्ट ऑफ मेजर लीडर्स ऑफ द मूवमेंट साधु सीताराम दास फॉर arrested other major leaders were arrested but vijay singh pathik avoided arrest vijay singh pathik went underground and he kept on organizing the revolt friends he kept on mobilizing the peasants and fighting and not sub, you know submitting the taxes to the state administration okay now the bijolia movement leader also tried to get the support of the indian national congress but they couldn't manage the support of the international congress the reason for that is that the official policy of the inc that is the international congress didn't allow state intervention or intervention in the provinces but mahatma gandhi ji was knowing the problem of the bijolia people so mahatma gandhi ji instructed madan mohan valvi to go and talk to maharana udaipur and convince him to listen to the people of bijolia jagir but maharana of udaipur was very much adamant on his stance he was full of ego he refused and he said that at any cost i will take the land revenue from this people and i will not yield to the demands of these people he did forgot that they are his own people only okay then the decision went on and on and this kisayat panchayat who was basically the official representative of the rebels i should not say the rebels the peasants okay so they established a parallel government and when you establish a parallel government you stop obeying the authority of the state authority so state authorities were not being obeyed parallel government was formed in the form of kisan panchayats now the things were getting out of hand and now it was the time for the british authorities to intervene because british authorities were saying that non cooperation movement is already going on okay and something like this is also happening the uh, the situation was very you know uh, unstable so the british authorities intervened and broke out an agreement between maharana and udaipur and this kisan panchayat which was also representative of the peasants and some judicial and police and jail reforms were to be introduced but these reforms were never implemented by the state authorities they were bro- brokered by the britishers both the sides agreed to the reforms but these reforms were never implemented which created a resentment among the peasants and which brought us to the third phase of this bijolia movement which started in 1923 and went up to 1941 but the third phase was Very much active friends. The reason being that Vijay Singh Pathik was arrested and he was released only in 1927, and he was released as a condition that he will not enter Mewar. And he was the leader. If he is not going to enter Mewar, how will he lead, friends? So his role was actually removed. Some other people took up the leadership role. Okay, but uh, even when they took up the leadership role, Jamnalal Bajaj, for example, this is a very famous name. He took up the leader of the peasant leadership of the peasants of Bijolia movement, but he was not very much known among the people. So people didn't listen too much to him, and some other leaders were also there. So these things like this were happening. Okay, also, you know, any revolt has its own. shortcoming friends you see the people have been remorting from a uh, uh, longer amount of time from since 1897 this thing is going on now if you are revolting okay friends that is you are leaving the lands fellow so if you are leaving the lands fellow you are not cultivating any cultivating anything so the no crops will be there if no crops will be there there will be no produce there you don't you will not have anything to eat actually for doing anything the basic amount of existence requires food to eat now the farmers were falling short of even the basic amount of food to eat so the farmers were also suffering a lot because of this movement okay so this bijolia movement was actually not able to meet its ultimate aim its ultimate aim was to reduce the excessive land revenue extractments so it was not able to do that but this was not unsuccessful fronts it was very successful because it brought about a conscientious conscious consciousness you know among the peasants against the oppressive and feudal elements of the society of our indian society it actually brought a sense of consciousness among them which will be useful in upcoming national and regional movements friends so this was bijolia movement friends i hope this thing was helpful to you if this thing was really helpful to you friends kindly subscribe to my channel friends okay and you can also give me a good uh, you know uh, friends uh, you know you can if you benefited from this you can tell me through your comments that uh, yes this thing was helpful for you friends so thank you for watching friends Have a good day. Goodbye.